Well, hello and welcome to another sort of unplanned impromptu video because shockingly enough my Pat McGrath order with the Blushing Delights palette and Negligé came in much earlier than I anticipated so obviously we need to try them ASAP. I'm going to start doing my makeup and we're going to chat in the meantime. I am going to grab my stroke cream from MAC in order to you know highlight a little bit underneath my eyes although I just did like a bunch of skincare so probably that is an unnecessary step but you know the glowier underneath my eyes the better aside from blushing delights i actually still want to play around a little bit with my two tom ford quads body heat and my newest one soleil alone so yeah we're pretty much going to be doing like a first impressions slash sort of shop my stash for a lot of you, it may come as a bit of a surprise that I picked up the Blushing Delights palette because I originally was very negative towards it because I wasn't a huge fan of the packaging. I'm still not a huge fan of the packaging, but I will come back to that uh, again in a little bit. However, and I maybe also mentioned that in the video where I chatted about this uh, collection and the release of this collection, I wasn't sure what people were going to say about the formula because it is a new formula for Pat McGrath. It's her first time she does like baked blushes. And I had kind of like left the door slightly ajar for in case people are really fond of the formula, in which case I might change my mind and pick up the palette anyway. I did not have the patience to wait for a sale, so I purchased both products uh, full price. I purchased Negligé because, as I also mentioned in my original review, I kind of fell in love with the formula. I fell in love with the formula of these Satin Allure lipsticks even more as I used them over time. So, as I mentioned in my original video, because I enjoyed the formula so much and I already picked up the red color, I also wanted to have one of the more nude colors that also come in the um, peachy pink sort of like packaging. So, that's what I did. Like I said, no shame. I did not wait for a sale. She currently has a Mother's Day sale, but obviously these products are too new to be included in the sale and I think it will take a couple of months probably before they go on sale. And I just do not have that kind of patience, okay? I don't. I really want to have the blushes because the blushes, the actual formula of the blushes has been getting rave reviews from everyone. Now for my foundation I'm going to do a bit of like a mixy mix. I'm going to take the Vanish from uh, Hourglass and my Pat McGrath Labs foundation because these are both foundations that I would like to eventually finish and even though the Pat McGrath foundation does not really need anything to look nice, this one is just really really heavy for me and I like to mix it in with something a little bit more lightweight but I always need to be careful because the hourglass foundation is so full coverage that like the teensiest tiniest drop gives you so much coverage like this may already be too much what I applied now but let's see so um, yeah I picked up the palette without a discount and to my shock and dismay they shipped everything unusually fast it took only like two or three days for that well not two or three like three or four days for them to ship the product and it has been exactly 10 days since it shipped and it already arrived today and i had heard some horror stories because admittedly i haven't actually used her free shipping in a while and the last time i used her free shipping i think was around the christmas holidays maybe and i think i had to wait for like a month or even over a month for the things to come in and because I've heard from other people in Europe that when you order with the free shipping shit takes forever to come in, I've actually been making use of her express shipping, especially with newer releases, because I just don't have that kind of patience. But with something like this, I was like, you know, I don't really care when exactly it comes in, I just want to have it at some point. And to my very pleasant surprise, it arrived really quickly. So here we are. I've really been enjoying the Pat McGrath foundation together with this Dior Backstage Powder, so I'm just going to set my face real quick with that. For bronzer, I think I'm going to do something a little bit warmer toned, because um, the blush shade that I'm the most interested in, obviously, is the coral shade. So I'm going to grab Delphic by MAC and this um, little brush that I have from Sonia G, that I have recently rediscovered in my collection. And I'm just going to very lightly bronze without really... Like I'm trying to be a bit more subtle today because in fact I'm not 
it's Saturday, I'm not really going anywhere, we're going to have a barbecue with our friends later and I do not need to look glamorous for that. And before that I'm actually going to be doing a little bit of gardening because our front yard needs a little bit of a cleanup. My tulips and my daffodils have like... What's the word when they like wane away? Anyway, they're done blooming, so I need to like cut the stems and like let the little bobs to recover for next year. And okay, for those of you who are into gardening, I have a question for you in case you know something about that. So I have a lilac tree, lilac bush in that it's setting. And I love, 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 love the smell of like the flowers of the lilac and they're only here for a very short amount of time. I've always dreamed of having one in my own like front or backyard. And uh, two years ago I finally uh, got one. And the first year, admittedly, I think the plant needed to recover a little bit and it also like all of a sudden was really frosty in the end of April. So I think that killed a lot of the flowers. But like the first year it didn't bloom. All the blooms just wilted away and... It, I never got a bloom out of it uh, in the first year. Then last year I finally got like a nice amount of flowering and this year I have the saddest single flower coming in my lilac bush. Everything else is green leaves and I like it's the saddest lilac bush on the block, okay? I walk around and I see people's bushes that barely have any green on them. They're just sprouting flowers just like spreading that beautiful aroma around the neighborhood. And here is mine, growing green leaves. If anyone please knows what the fuck is going wrong, please let me know. Because if that thing doesn't sprout any flowers again next year, I'm going to have to like put it away and put a new one in there because I'm so pissed off. All right, now that we've gone on this very unnecessary tangent, let's cut back to the makeup. So the Blushing Delights palette, you have seen the packaging, quite bulky, quite lightweight cardboard. I had already seen um, people's packaging get damaged from like the little tape that they had put on both sides so I was very careful when I was removing it and it seemed like the kind of tape that should really come off quite easily without tearing the packaging apart so I'm really happy that my packaging did not suffer any damage. Here are my thoughts on the overall packaging. Is this something that you would expect you know of Pat McGrath a luxury brand that usually gives us like that very heavy luxurious lacquered packaging? No. But is this something I would totally expect to see on the vanity of a 18th century high society, you know, lady? Totally. Was there Regents here in the 18th or 19th century? I don't know. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is that it fits the aesthetic of the collection. This is something that I would completely imagine on the vanity of someone from that era. A piece like this is absolutely something I would imagine on the vanity of any of those ladies that are in the TV series. So with that said, I think it fits the aesthetic of that. You have already seen the beautiful baked blushes that come with uh, this palette. You have like a nice bubblegummy pink, a more berry shade, and the one that I'm the most interested in, obviously the little like peachy uh, pink moment here, and it also has a highlight. Uh, it looks a little bit like a DIY project because I can like sort of see where the product is glued. I wish the little like baked pants were a little bit more submerged into the actual packaging but you know as long as they don't fall off and break then I'm okay. But this is also not something that I would travel with or do anything more than just keep it safely here on my vanity to use uh, every now and then when the mood strikes. Let's with that do a little bit of swatching of each of the blushes because I'm just curious how they feel. I haven't actually touched anything yet. So let's start with the nice bubble gum pink. Oh my goodness this feels so soft and so satiny you have no idea. Oh gosh, just like tactile, the tactile experience of touching these is glorious. This is the pink. No, I'm lying. This is the berry, this is the pink, and this is the peach. They swatch absolutely beautifully. You can see they have that beautiful sheen on them. Now let's watch the highlighter, which upon first glance, let's see if I can show this to you up close and personal, seems to have glitter in it. But I've heard that it actually goes on to the cheekbones quite beautifully. So the only thing is that I've already seen quite a bit of reviews on this. So this is, yeah, this is like a peachy golden, very classic for Pat McGrath shade. 
I'm going to swatch this again, similar things that I have in my collection for sure. Usually I would do different blushes on different cheeks, but like I can't be bothered today. I really just want to use this one and this one. So I'm going to come back and we're going to use each of the three colors of blushes, but for today I'm just going to take a tiny bit of this gorgeous shade. And you can see I just barely touched the product and you pick up already so much. So I'm just going to tap it, tap, tap a little bit to get rid of some of the excess. And then we're going to start fluffing it here onto the cheeks. And the nice thing about this formula is that it's very pigmented, but at the same time it blends out quite easily. You can see it has a beautiful like sheen and glow to it. And that is one of the reasons I was just so tempted to get these blushes, because I love me a glowy blush. They pack on quite a punch, so indeed you need to be very careful, something that you've probably heard already a hundred times from other people's reviews, but they do blend out very, very easily. Really pretty. But don't ask me to immediately give you a very conclusive response to whether I like the formula or not. I've come to the conclusion that when it comes to blush, I really need to take my time, I really need to use them a bit, see how they wear, see how they look throughout the day. Um, because originally when Pat re released her blushes, I was, I was not critical or lukewarm, I really liked them, but at the same time I thought they were like eh, nothing out of the ordinary. But then, now that I have used them over the course of the last year, I can tell you without the shadow of a doubt that they're my favorite powder blush formula. Are these going to be like that? Only time will tell. I did enjoy very much the process of applying it and like I said, a glowy blush is what my dream, my blush dreams are made of. But I will take my time to get to know these a little bit better before I can give a more well-rounded review. They will probably pop up in like a monthly roundup at some point. So, next thing I'm going to do is take a little uh, fan brush like this and go into the highlighter. And I'm just going to give it a nice little blend. This actually, in terms of tones, reminds me a lot of Golden Nectar, but with um, more visible like glitter particles. Golden Nectar is very smooth on the skin, whereas this one you can definitely tell, I don't know whether you can tell, that there are visible small, you know, glitter particles to it. Small glitter particles in a highlighter don't really bother me so much, so I think for me this is a, a pretty nice formula. So here you have the highlighter. I think it's just just like Golden Nectar on the cusp of being too dark for me, but I can pull it off. And if I can't pull it off, you know, we can pretend I can. Now, as usual, I'm going to grab my little spongy sponge and a little bit of Fix Plus to melt all the powders on my face together. That is just SOP on my channel. I'm just going to do a little bit of this action. And for me, storing this product is not going to be an issue because I'm just going to put it on the little tray that I have here next to me on my vanity. And this is just going to stand on my vanity because I feel like this is a piece that doesn't belong in a drawer. It really belongs on display. I'm enjoying how my base is looking. I don't know whether you would agree with me, but uh, overall, so far, so good. I I'm not really surprised because I already knew what to expect um, from the many, many reviews I had already seen of this collection and this blush palette. Anyway, moving on to the eyes. I'm going to basically do a little bit of a pairing of the two Tom Ford, Tom Ford quads that I have. I'm going to first go into Body Heat and take this beautiful rusty orange shade here. And what I have found out with these eyeshadows from Tom Ford is that I really like applying them with my fingers. So, I'm actually going to just apply the tiniest bit of this. I've already primed my lids, by the way. I've always primed my lids before I apply eyeshadow. I'm going to just put it here in the outer corner of the eyes and then I'm going to grab a fluffy brush to blend it out. But I just want to lay the color with my fingers because I enjoy the experience and I also feel like this just applies so nice with your fingers. Now I'm grabbing a fluffy brush, going to apply a tiny a bit more of the product to just uh, have a bit more to blend out. Like I said, I'm trying not to go too glamorous today because a barbecue in my house is not the most glamorous of events. By the way, as we speak, I have my very first attempt 
uh, of making cinnamon rolls going. I have my dough which is in the oven doing the first rice. So I've added the yeast and the flour and all the good stuff and now I have like my dough in a little bowl and it's rising in the oven. I checked on it just uh, 10 minutes ago and it had already like increased quite a bit in size. I'm just going to leave it there for a good probably additional hour and then I'm going to take it out. I'm going to roll the little things, put it in the fridge and tomorrow I'm going to do the second rice before I bake it. But I'm really, really excited because cinnamon rolls sound absolutely delightful. The only thing I intend on doing differently is the original recipe goes with like an icing of um, cream cheese and sugar and, you know, stuff like that. And I uh, just have it in my head, like completely nestled into my brain, that I need to try cinnamon rolls with warm vanilla sauce because I love a warm vanilla sauce. So I think that's what I'm going to go for. An eyeshadow that I didn't really get to use yesterday from the Soleil et Lune quad is this one here, which looks like a beautiful, like light peachy neutral nude shade. And I'm going to take that again just on my finger. It seems to have a really nice like glow to it. And I'm going to apply that all over my whole lid. Again, using my fingers, because like I said, I just think these feel and look so nice when you apply them with your fingers. Actually, earlier I was playing around and I had just put like um, <laughs> one shade on this eye and another shade on this eye and then I just put it with my fingers and then I sort of like blended it out with my fingers and I think that on a super lazy day that could be enough for me. They're that easy to blend out. <laughs> this is probably looking really subtle on camera but I think in real life it's actually just really really pretty. In my inner corners I'm going to grab the frosty white also from the Soleil and Lune palette and I'm going to use a finger I'm going to and I'm going to use a brush because I have a hard time shoving my finger into my inner corners and I'm actually going to take this just a tiny bit into the inner third of the lid because I feel like it lightens my inner corners so nicely and it looks so ethereal. Isn't that pretty? It has a very interesting texture. This one is definitely not as much like a blitz. It's more of like a satin matte of sorts. It's a very interesting texture, this specific shade. Okay, going back into the uh, Body Heat Quad and again this shade and just using that same brush to do like the lightest of fluffing. Just for like a very subtle finishing touch. And last but certainly not least, let's try Negligé. comes in a beautiful peachy packaging with the cute little bow on it and it looks like a really pretty nude shade. Let's give it a little bit of a swatch on the back of my hand. Oh, this looks like a really pretty shade. It has a bit of like pink, a bit of peach, like a well-balanced nude shade. I'm really excited to try it. Oh, this looks really pretty and really flattering. I must say, I didn't really have a proper, like, easy, that fits with everything nude lipstick from Pat McGrath. My nudest shades from her are Christy, which mm, is a little bit too light and too pink for me. And then we have She's Heaven, which I really like, but She's Heaven has a little bit of, like, mauviness and coolness to it, so it doesn't really fit with quite everything. And then I have Donatella, which is the nudiest nude that I have and it's just a little too much for me so I always have to mix it with other colors but this is the absolute like perfect nude for me so I'm really happy to have a nice nude from Pat McGrath Labs and I already know that I love the formula because I have Elson 5 and I've worn Elson 5 quite a few times and all this just this looks so lovely. I love the tone of this lipstick. It's such a well-balanced nude. Okay, so I'm very happy with the look. It is exactly what I wanted. Something a little bit more subtle, not too glamorous for a Saturday of gardening and barbecue. I hope you enjoyed this video. Before I conclude though, I would like to maybe do a couple of comparison swatches between the uh, some of the blush shades in the Pat McGrath palette and other blushes that I have that are similar in color. Obviously there is no comparison when it comes to the formula because this is a baked formula and I don't really have baked formulas of blushes in my collection anymore. 
that's a lie i have one of the milani blushes i don't really have uh within pets collection blushes that are quite in these shades because the selection of colors that i have from her original blush collection really are not anything like any of these colors maybe of the, some of the colors that i don't own would be similar to these two but this one she didn't really have a color quite like this one in her original release except for maybe nude venus but i re I, nah, I don't think nude i think nude venus is a bit more you know dull in its tones this is a bit more vibrant but let's swatch it just in case so this is nude venus And this is the one from Pat, and they're just completely different shades. I love Nude Venus, one of my favorite blushes, by the way. Anyway, uh, speaking of a baked blush, let's pull out the Milani Luminoso blush, which I want to compare to, again, that peachy shade. I'm sure they're going to be very different. The Milani one also feels very nice and very smooth, by the way, but this has much more of, like, pastel apricot peach tones, so it's a lot lighter in tone. The one from Pat is... A lot more of like a true like peachy gold sheen coral type of shade so this one here and this uh, Nubble Skin Glazing in the shade Truth because as you can see also just visually speaking I mean this is more vibrant but they're relatively similar in terms of their idea and this is one of my favorite blushes of all time, so I'm just curious how it compares. The Nubble formula is even glowier and it has a even stronger of a sheen compared to the one from Pat. The one from Pat is like a setting glowy formula. This is much more of like a baked gelée, very glowy. I don't know, I love this formula so much. And I think I would like to do one last comparison swatch and that is between the two highlighters because as I mentioned I think Golden Nectar from last year has a very similar color but just in a very different formula. So just to demonstrate the differences in the formula and the color a little bit, this is Golden Nectar, this is the new one and I don't know whether you can tell that the new one has a little bit of sparkles to it whereas this one is much smoother and I think the new one is also a bit more yellow. So let's do this again. Here we have Golden Nectar. Here we have whatever this shade is called from the new palette. This is more yellow. This is more like a peachy copper, whereas this one is more of like a gold copper. Okay, so overall I'm pretty happy with both products. I'm going to definitely come back and tell you a bit more about this blush palette once I have used it enough times, tested it throughout the day, just looked at myself in different mirrors and in different lighting to really be properly able to assess the formula. I can tell you for a fact that I love negligee. I love the formula, I already knew that. The color is absolutely stunning and everything I wanted from a nude, so I predict using this color a lot in the future. The eye look also turned out really cute and really soft. I really like it. So overall, I'm pretty happy with everything we did today in terms of makeup. I hope you enjoyed this video and you were still curious to hear my two cents on the Blushing Delights palette. Not that I really had anything much more to add to the conversation rather than I agree with some things, I can see some other things, you know, and why they certain choices have been made in terms of the packaging. And like I said, the formula, We'll just have to come back and reassess in a couple of weeks. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and we shall see each other again very, very soon. Bye!